Welcome back to Horrors Worldwide. Today I'm going to explain a Swedish romantic horror film called Let the Right One In, released in 2008. Spoilers ahead! Watch out and stay safe. The story revolves around a 12-year-old Oscar, a kid with separated parents and gets bullied by the other boys at his school, especially Connie and his two friends, Martin and Andreas. One night, when Oscar looks outside from his window, he sees a new girl about his age and her father moving into the apartment next door to him. Oscar doesn't know that Eli is a vampire, and the man, Hakan, is her Renfield, whose job is to bring Eli fresh blood, which he gets by killing other humans. A few days later, as Oscar is in the courtyard stabbing a tree instead of his tormentors, he notices Eli watching him. She's not very friendly, as she tells him right off that she can't be friends with him. The next evening, when they run into each other again in the courtyard, Oscar notices that Eli is not wearing a coat, even though it's the dead of winter in Stockholm, and she smells bad. Still, Oscar shares with her his Rubik's Cube and shows her how to work it. After Oscar has gone inside, Eli goes hunting. She waits in the shadows under a bridge. When two neighborhood friends, Jocko and Lack, part company, and Jocko walks under the bridge, Eli calls out, Help me! thinking the little girl has fallen. Jocko picks her up. Suddenly, Eli latches onto him and bites his neck. Gosta, a friend of the two men, sees everything from his apartment window. By the time he is able to reach there for help, Jocko's body is gone. In the morning, Oscar finds that Eli has solved the Rubik's Cube and left it in the courtyard. When they meet there later in the day, Eli is a bit more friendly, taking the time to explain to Oscar how she went about solving the puzzle. She also smells better and they spend some time together talking about birthdays and gifts. Since Eli doesn't celebrate her birthdays and gets no presents, Oscar offers her the Rubik's Cube as a gift. The next day at school, Oscar stays after class to copy the symbols for Morse code from the encyclopedia. On his way home, he is confronted by Connie and his two friends. When Connie orders Oscar to show him what he copied from the encyclopedia, and Oscar refuses, Martin grabs Oscar, and Andreas begins to whip his legs with a stick. As an added measure, Martin slaps the stick against Oscar's cheek, gashing it. Oscar later tells his mother that he fell during recess, but when Eli asks what happened, he tells her the truth. Eli tells him that he must start to fight back, and only that stops them from tormenting him. She also offers her help if he needs it. Oscar shares with Eli the Morse code that he copied from the encyclopedia. That night, they practice tapping on the wall that separates their apartments. Later, when they both go out to have candy, Eli asks him whether or not he would still like her if she wasn't a girl. I guess so, Oscar replies, not quite understanding what Eli is asking. As the friendship between Oscar and Eli deepens, Hakan starts feeling a bit jealous. He tries again to obtain blood for Eli. This time, he preys on a student, alone in the weightlifting room, but he is interrupted when the boy's friends come to pick him up. Knowing that he is trapped and about to be discovered, Hakan pours acid on his face so that he can't be identified. When Eli learns that Hakan has been taken to a hospital, she shows up asking for her father. The desk clerk tells her that Hakan is on level 7, so she climbs up the outside of the building until she gets to his window. Hakan lets her in and offers her his neck. After Eli drinks his blood, Hakan falls to his death. Eli returns to the apartment building and taps on Oscar's bedroom window, asking to be let in. Oscar is almost asleep, but he tells her to come in. Eli crawls into bed with him, and Oscar notices that she doesn't have any clothes on. He asks her whether she'd like to go steady with him, and Eli replies, I'm not a girl. That doesn't seem to bother Oscar, so they decide to go steady. The next morning, Eli returns to her own apartment. One afternoon on a school outing to a local pond for some ice skating, Connie, Martin, and Andreas again confront Oscar with a warning that they are going to push him into an ice hole. This time, however, Oscar stands up for himself and takes a swipe at Connie's head with a stick, causing his ear to bleed. At the same time, two younger students who went off to pee behind some trees noticed a body frozen in the ice. The police are called, and the body is cut free. Later that afternoon, after school is out, Oscar brings Eli to a basement room at the school. When Eli asks why they're there, Oscar pulls out a knife and cuts his palm, offering his blood with her. Watching Oscar's blood drip on the floor, Eli can no longer stand the hunger that she's experiencing, now that Hakan is not providing her with blood. She falls to the floor and begins to lap up Oscar's blood. The body stuck in the ice is identified as that of Jocko's. Jocko's drinking buddy, Lack, and his girlfriend, Virginia, try to convince Gosta to tell the police what he saw the night that Jocko was murdered. 
Later, on the way home, Virginia is attacked by Eli. Since Lack was following her from behind, he was able to kick Eli off before she killed Virginia. Unfortunately for Virginia, Lack's save only means that Virginia is doomed to become a vampire. She notices the change the next morning when she opens the blinds and quickly closes them again. That evening, she visits Ghost's apartment looking for Lack, but she is viciously attacked by Ghost's cats as they understand what she has become. Later, in the hospital, Virginia realizes that she's been infected with something and decides that she doesn't want to live. She asks the doctor to open the blinds to her room. Immediately, she is consumed in flames. After that, Eli comes to Oscar's apartment and asks to be invited in. He stalls, asking her what would happen if he didn't invite her in. Eli steps inside and begins to bleed from various places on her body. Oscar relents and invites her in. Eli explains that she drinks blood because she has to. Apparently, Oscar understands, as he allows Eli to shower and put on one of his mother's dresses. As Eli dresses, Oscar peeks in the door and notices that Eli has a horizontal scar across her pubic area and no evidence of a vaginal slit. When Oscar's mom comes home, Eli immediately scampers across the window from Oscar's apartment to hers, even though it's two stories up. The next morning, Oscar finds a note from Eli asking him whether he wants to meet her that evening. Now, Lack has somehow traced Eli to her apartment, and he comes to avenge his girlfriend's and friend's death. Since he cannot see in the darkness inside the house, he rips open the cardboard covering the windows. Oscar, who is in the apartment, waiting for Eli to wake up, screams, and that gives Eli enough time to jump on Lack and drink his blood. After feeding, Eli thanks Oscar, but informs him that she must go away. The next day, Oscar gets a call from Martin, asking whether or not he's going to be at swimming practice that afternoon. Martin also tells Oscar that he thinks Oscar was right to stand up to Connie. That afternoon, while Oscar is in the pool, someone starts a fire in the trash bin out back, forcing the attendant to leave the pool area unattended. As Martin distracts Oscar, Connie, Andreas, and Connie's big brother Jimmy enter the pool area. Jimmy orders everyone else out of the pool. When they are alone with Oscar, Jimmy gives Oscar a choice, either stay underwater for three minutes or have one of his eyes poked out. Then Jimmy grabs Oscar's hair and pushes him under. A minute passes. Suddenly, feet can be seen skimming on the surface of the water, followed by Jimmy's severed head and then Jimmy's severed arm. An almost drowned Oscar is pulled from the water by Eli, who has just slaughtered three of Oscar's tormentors, leaving the fourth sobbing on the side of the pool. Oscar's condition is worse when he comes outside from the water. Relying on the sincerity of Eli, Oscar agrees to go with her, leaving everything. Then we see Oscar on the train with a big box in front of him, in which Eli is locked in, as vampires cannot sustain themselves in the sunlight.